Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Romans chapter 8 verse 12 as well as Luke chapter 12 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for your word Lord Jesus. Thank you for being our strength, being our guide. Lord Jesus, you never let go of us and we're thankful Jesus. Forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Romans chapter 8, verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. All right, so we are debtors. So first of all, let's look right here. It says, so then, brothers. So, right, we, we're brothers. When we become a part of Christ's body, we are brothers and sisters, Right. And and we relate to one another because we all have the spirit in us. Remember, even even as it says, brothers, we are more than sons to the Lord. The Lord sees us as heirs and fellow heirs. We're going to reign with Christ. Why? Because we have suffered with him. We have gone through this life. And remember, we don't suffer as Jesus suffered. We suffered um, in the furnace of affliction, meaning daily trials, the things that we go through um, in daily life. And so it, not as Christ suffered, su Christ suffered in the furnace of, um, of as silver is refined, right? He went through the tough trials, the hard trials for us so that we don't, so that he, we don't um, have to go through those things, right? But those who will be left behind and in tribulation, they will go through those things. Remember, silver is refined seven times in the fire. And so it's a hard um, trial, um, silver refinement. It is, it is continuous in high heat and continuous seven times into the fire to remove all the sin, the dross. Um, but we don't have to live like that. The Bible says we, we um, are refined through the furnish of affliction. So our daily trials. And so it says, so then brothers, so we are brothers and sisters, right? Um, it says we are debtors, not to the flesh, right? So we were debtors, um, to the flesh before we were saved. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. There's a debt to be paid, um, when we sin. And so, um, if we don't ever come under the covering of Christ, then we'll have to pay that debt, um, after we've died. Right. And so because we've received Christ into our heart, um, he has taken that sin debt, right? Through his suffering, he became sin so that we don't have to pay this debt. So it says we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. So we don't have to be drug around by sin. We don't have to be led by our flesh. Um, the things that our desires are, are, are the things that, that um, are carnal in nature, the things that this world are led by, right? Remember when you first become a Christian, you know, you're still, even though the old man is dead, you still have to crucify that flesh, right? You still have to, um, and, and I mean, even Christians who have been Christians for a long time, some are still suffering with a thorn, you know, somewhere. And, and we all, you know, have our weak points, but in Christ, we're made strong, right? And once you get a hold of that and, and you allow Christ to purge you um, of many of the desires that, that you have, you over time, it becomes easier, right? And so um, it, those things of carnal nature, those things that are of our flesh, our sexuality, our desires to be like the world, um, our draw of, of, of the old ways that we used to live, those things become easier, right? At first, you know, it's kind of hard when you start to try to pull yourself away from the world. But um, once you allow Christ into it and you rest in him, it begins it becomes easier and you you also get over yourself right you get over yourself and you say hey you know what I'm not giving up on this um once you kind of die to self and just say you know what this is who I am in in Christ and I'm not going back it you kind of it's an easier withdrawal 
All right. And so, but the thing is, when you've been a Christian for a while, this can kind of get a little sketchy, right? Because then you start to tell yourself, hey, you know, like, no, I'm good, right? Oh, I I don't have those desires anymore. God delivered me from this and this. But then you are refusing to look at the other areas that God is showing you, right? Remember, we, he's going to continue. He's going to have this continuous work in us, right? It's never going to just be at a point of arrival. We are walking a daily walk. And so whatever it is that God is revealing in your heart, um, that's what we're working on. We're we're allowing him to come into that place. We are being raw. We are being open um, about our, our desires and the things that are going on in us, even if they to the world might look like, wow, that person's crazy, right? <laughs> so, I mean, because I mean, look at Ezekiel um, laying on his side, right? And I'm quite sure if he wanted to get out of that, he could have gotten out of that so easy, according to man, right? But he's not a debtor of the flesh. He is a debtor to Christ. He is a debtor to the spirit because he lives by the spirit. Um, When the Lord told him to lay on his side for that long and to do all those strange things, things that were strange to us, he could have just as easily went to um a rabbi or something and said hey this is what I think I hear God telling me to do and more than likely he could have found anybody to say no God doesn't work like that that's you um, maybe you need to go seek some mental health <laughs> you know maybe you need to go do this or that we can go who we want to to try to justify ourselves right when when we know that God is giving us a calling or telling us to do something specific we can find excuses we can go well we know that sister Seth such and such will be right on our side and say, you know what, girl, you ain't got to do all that. Right. And so we know that if we are debtors to the spirit, then when the spirit speaks, we are held accountable to, to do what the spirit has told us to do. And, and uh, as we grow in Christ, sometimes, you know, that, that, that maturity level has a higher level of accountability, that ability to hear very specific details in the spirit causes you to have to be accountable to more. Right. And so it says, so then brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. All right. And so the the second verse that he gave me was Luke 12, verse two, nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. So this, I mean, how much more should, this is very clear, right? It's saying that, you know, as we are growing in Christ, as we are, are growing in the spirit, um, we are going to have to be accountable to what it is that God is telling us to do. Um, even me, I, I, I shouldn't even say even me, 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 <laughs> because I, I get conflation sometimes and, you know, I don't want to do certain things and, and, you know, it's flesh, right? It is purely flesh. Um, and it's easy for some people to say, oh no, girl, you're crazy. Well, you know what? You don't hear what I hear in the spirit, right? So I have to be accountable to what I hear in the spirit. It says here in Luke 12 too, nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. So don't worry about whether or not someone um, agrees with you with what God told you to do. That is not for them to hear. That is for you to hear, right? And so if you feel that unction in your spirit, don't worry. God will make it all right in the end. He will show them just like he showed you, but it might be on the other side, right? So don't worry about whether or not um, such and such is it thinks that you shouldn't do this mission trip or you didn't really hear from God that you should go down into the ghetto and, and talk to the people who are on drug. No, don't worry about whether sister such and such approves. You do what the Lord has given you to do. 
because it will be revealed at some point in time, even if it's on the other side, God is going to make it right, right? He's going, they're going to be, have to be held accountable for what they said or did, right? And, and God have mercy on them or us, whoever it is, right? But the thing is, you have to do what God has told you to do. Amen. All right, so here um, we're going to actually go a little bit deeper into the Romans 8 um, for a second. So let me go here. So we're going to draw a little bit more context um, uh, about Romans 8. So this is Romans 8 verse 3. It says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. Remember, the law couldn't cause us to be righteous. So um, when Christ came, God had, God saw a resolution to that, right? He wasn't going to lower his law. He wasn't going to change his law. He wasn't going to say this was good and okay, we're going to throw this one out. No, he's going to keep his law. Right. And he's going to cause someone to help um, achieve the standard. Right. And so that's Christ. Christ was the one who could actually fulfill all of the law and be in flesh. Right. So it says for God has done what the law weakened by flesh us. We are the ones who are in flesh. Um, we, we couldn't fulfill all of the law. And so it says for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So by his life, by his way of living, even though he was in flesh, just like us, somehow Christ's perfection, he achieved the standard. All right. And so verse four, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. All right. And so um, it says in order that righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Um, so that that righteous requirement of the law, remember, was not going to change. And he fulfilled it in us. He gave us the fulfillment of the law through through his life, right? And it says, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So now that we have this covering over us of the fulfillment of the law, we we have the spirit in us and he's a part of that covering, right? He is the one who has sealed us and saying, saying yes, okay, this one is mine. Um, I'm gonna hold her until uh, she is redeemed. I'm going to hold him until he is redeemed. I'm going to seal him. I'm going to put a seal on him. Usually seals were something that would seal a scroll, right? So you would take the paper and you would roll it up and and it would have like the ink and the ink would be poured on the 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 two pieces of the paper and they would stamp it, right? And so when they stamp it, it would hold together. It would seal together. It would be um, hardened and you couldn't break or open you couldn't open the scroll unless you broke the seal and so that's what Christ has done to us um, by his Holy Spirit the Spirit is the one that seals us until the day of Christ's return so we are bought right so this contract of of being the bride of Christ um, we are bought and so that contract is sealed until Christ returns. All right. And so that's why we, but it's the spirit that does that. Right. So if you don't have the spirit of God, then you were never sealed. So, um, when you receive Christ and you receive him into your heart as savior and Lord, right? He needs to be Lord over your life. You not only need to, to believe, um, you have to believe that he is Christ and he is the Lord, right? And he, you've made him Lord of your life. And so, um, um, you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that's what Lordship is. Lordship is rulership, right? Lordship is, is being over another person. And so, um, when you receive him as savior and Lord, when you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Right. And so you have confessed, um, 
when you confess, it's kind of like bowing the knee, right? It's 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 like, yes, you are my Lord. Um, you're kissing the ring and you're saying, yes, I believe. All right. And so I'm falling under this leadership. I'm falling under this lordship. And so it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that righteous, the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So now we are no longer um, slaves are indebted to the, the flesh, but uh, according to the spirit, we're walking by the, the spirits leading, the spirit is leading us through life. Right. Right. Verse five, for those who live according to the flesh, set their mind on things of the flesh. Right. So it's a setting. Right. And so it, he's, he's going back from the contrast. He's saying, okay, let's go back to the flesh setting. Okay. When you're under a flesh setting, which is not the Lordship of Christ, it says for those who live, live, live is an action. It's a daily process, right? When, when you're talking about having have received Christ, you're living under a new standard, right? But when you're living before Christ, it says for those who live, according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh, right? They, they want to, they want to go after the things that they want. They want to go after the things that they desire. Therefore they don't come under the Lordship of Christ. Right. And so, um, it, it says live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So it says, um, let me reread. No, I'm sorry. I, I read the wrong words according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. So we have to set our minds on the things of the spirit. That's a setting, right? We've changed over our setting. When we receive Christ, we changed it from the AM, AM to FM or whatever you want to consider it, right? We are changing to a new setting right? If anything, we're changing from analog to digital, right? So you are being led by a new um, leader. So that spirit that is in you, you can chasten it, right? You can kind of damper it. You can say, oh, I'm not going to listen to that, you know, go talk to that lady. And the sad part is if you do it, the more you do it in the beginning, um, the easier it becomes, right? And you want the spirit to become stronger in you and not weaker in you because you've rejected it so much. So we should be using the spirit often daily, moment by moment, second by second, right? The more you use it, especially in the small things, the easier it is when the big things come to um, use the spirit, to live by the spirit. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. I remember this woman said she wakes up every morning and her, the first things out of her mouth is, you know, good morning, Jesus reporting for duty, right? Because when you are on this new setting, you have to remember it, right? It is a conscious thought to rest in Christ, right? It, it, when you rest, it is not just a resting of, well, I'm going to go to sleep in Christ, right? It is a daily waking, moving, having our being, right? Kind of in him. And so um, she said she wakes up every single morning and she says, reporting for duty. And that's, that's how we should, that's how our attitude should be. And you know, your flesh is going to want to resist that. Your flesh is going to want to, uh-uh, no, I don't have time for this today. No. And, you know, it's going to get easier with time, but the more you resist it, especially in the beginning stages, when you resist the Lord, it is, uh, it's not a good thing. Right. And it's going to become harder and harder to, um, begin that walk, that daily walk. <laughs> And so you have to make sure you are not turned away from him, that you are 
putting your hand to the plow and getting started, right? And so it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, set their mind on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Wow. So imagine the setting that you're setting yourself to is life and peace. Don't you want to have peace? Peace is so much better of a setting than than the flesh. Peace is so much better of a setting to rest in Christ and have peace in him, to have a life in him. It, it's a better setting, right? It's an easier setting. It's a It may not be easy of a walk, but it's an easier setting to be in, to know and trust that Christ is is fulfilling his will in you as you walk in daily life, right? Don't you want to have peace when you hear that the Lord is telling you to go help that person? Uh, don't you want to have peace, right? You, you want to have peace. You don't want to be tossing and turning at night saying, I shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? We want to have peace. And so it says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. So you might not see it as hostility, right? When you resist the Holy Spirit, but it is hostile, right? And so God sees it as hostile. When you are saying, mm, I, I, this is my last, I can't give that, right? Um, then then you are not listening to the spirit and, and that breeds a mentality, right? And you don't know when that one little seed that you plant is gonna come up to a tree. You just have to keep going with God, right? You can't you can't plant these ugly thoughts and think that, oh, it's it's gonna be okay. Remember what we always talk about? The devil just wants a foothold, right? The devil just wants a foothold. He just wants a little place so that he can let it all in. He does not want to stop with one little thing, right? Even when you feel justified, like I've told you guys before, once I um I took an exam and I had been praying and praying and speaking and praying and praying and doing anything, doing the most and, you know, believing, believing God that he would do this thing for me and it didn't work out right and um that specific exam it was the exam it was a perfect it was a but that wasn't the path that God had me on at the time right and so it didn't matter how much I um I prayed that it will work out that way you know he works all things together for my good and I always pray that his will be done in my life on earth as it is in heaven so instead of just sitting and listening in the spirit at the time I should have just you know hey it's not working out. Maybe you should reconsider whether or not you're on the right path. And so when this exam didn't work out, I was resentful and I, I actually allowed that spirit in me, right? I, I, I was very conscious of it. I was like, well, for this one thing, I feel that God has not blah, blah, blah. Right. And so I was like, I just, I'm going to, I'm not going to stay here forever, God, but I just, for right now, I want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. I just want to just give in to myself and pout. And it wasn't, I hadn't done anything. I didn't, I, I did my normal routine. <laughs> I have still watched my gospel channel, but I had this seed and it was a bad seed. And I remember Christ really being raw with me and open with me um, because he needed me to be real with him and, and so that I could see myself. And I remember it took a really long time for that bitterness to go away. I could, I tried to get rid of that bitterness. I tried to walk away from it, but it was very hard. And I knew that it was because I had allowed that foothold in. The enemy was not wanting to let it go. He wanted a pure infestation. He wanted it to take over my entire Christian walk, 
right? Because God knew that he had something right at the door. He had something great in the spirit for me. He had something wonderful. And yet the enemy knew that something was up and he wanted to sabotage it. So, and that's how our lives are, right? The the enemy wants us to begin to walk in the flesh. He wants us to let that foothold in. Who knows whether the foothold is going to be the one, right? Because that was a the one moment. And thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy for having mercy on me because he could have left me in that. But he says he would never leave us or forsake us. So we have to just trust that he's going to bring us out of that 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 is not going to be a part of the foundation that's in our heart. No, um, we have to keep pressing on. We have to keep reporting for duty. Amen. All right. It says, so for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Hmm. So when you have that hostility because of the resistance of the spirit, Right. And and remember, when you're resisting the spirit, you're resisting that life and peace. You're resisting that lordship of Christ. You're resisting the wrong thing. Right. And in the end, it's going to come back and you don't want it to to be um, a loss. Right. You don't want um, your work at that point in time in your life to be burnt up at the beam of seat. Right. So it says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. It cannot. Your flesh cannot submit to God's law when you are hostile to the spirit, right? Because they are one. They are one. All right. And so verse eight, it says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Wow, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. There is something wrong. God God is not going to make that connection. God is not going to give that approval, right? For you, he's not going to be answering every prayer and, and quickly doing, no. If you're walking in the flesh, yes, he, a lot of times he will still be patient with you. He will still have mercy on you. But you don't want to get into a situation of wrath because he's a patient God. He's a loving and steadfast God. While we're out there doing whatever and living by the flesh, he he still died for us, right? He still died knowing that we would do, do what we do. He still died, but we cannot please God. You want to be in a state of pleasing God, right? You want to be in a state of building those heavenly accounts. You want to be a, in a state of grace and peace, right? Life and peace. You don't want to be in a state of hostility towards God. It says for those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, you brothers and sisters, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, does the spirit of God dwells in you? That is the spirit of God having its dwelling in you, right? When the spirit seals us until the day of redemption, that means you are, are allowing him in this house of yours, in this body of yours to dwell freely. Have you ever seen a prisoner in someone, a prisoner in their own home? Right. It's it's not. Uh, if, have you ever seen a person who's been kidnapped and sitting in chains and things in a house? right? Do they have a free dwelling? Are they dwelling there? No, they are prisoners. And so we don't want the spirit to feel like a prisoner. We want the spirit to dwell in us and have freedom in us and be able to speak to us without our hostility, without our our, our mindset that is, is not of death. We want a, a mindset of life and peace right? He's trying to give that to us and we have to be open and willing and ready to receive it. All right. And so it says, um, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Hmm. So if you don't have the spirit and it's not dwelling in you, then you don't belong to him. The end. 
You need the spirit. The spirit of God is the proof of the pudding, right? It's the proof in the pudding. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's the proof, right? That that you are of God because you have the spirit in you and he's speaking to you. He's talking to you. He is dwelling in you and he is not in a hostile environment. He is in an environment where he is welcome. Tell him right now, say you are welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak out loud right now. Talk to the Holy Spirit if you can. Just just speak to him. Tell him that he is welcome in your house. Amen. In this temple of yours. All right. And so we are going to quickly go to Luke 12 verse 2. All right. And Luke 12 verse 2, remember, is the completion. So I'm just going to read from here um actually that's what it was um here it says the first part of 12 it says in the meantime so when many thousands of the people had gathered together they were trampling on one another he began to say to his disciples first beware of the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy all right so because it starts like that in the meantime and then it starts in the middle of a a rushing crowd let's just go back to 11 and we're going to start at 11 42 and i'm going to just read but woe to the pharisees for you tithe mint and rue, those are herbs. It says, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogue and the greetings in the marketplaces. Verse 44, woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves and people walk over them without knowing it. Wow. All right. So it's speaking to the Pharisees this part. It is saying that they are tithing on every little thing and yet they are neglecting justice and love. If you have justice in your ability um, to do something and you neglect that, but yet you're so diligent about tithing and pointing the finger to other people about tithing, and yet you don't, you see your neighbor in need, right? You see a person who has a need and you don't walk in love, right? It says these, you ought to have you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Yes, you are supposed to tithe on everything, right? You're supposed to tithe on those things. You're supposed to tithe on what you have. You're supposed to give, but you don't just give and just fail to neglect your neighbor, right? And, and I mean, fail to help your neighbor, fail to walk in love, This is the greatest commandment, right? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. We cannot neglect love in anything. If we love, then we fulfill the whole law, right? If we walk in that love, if we're walking in that 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 beauty of God, that's the beauty of God is love. And so it's saying here that that has been neglected in the Pharisees, and that's like leaven, that's bad, it spreads right? It says, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace, meaning that they want to be seen, right? They, they're they popular. They've loved popularity in a time where God is calling for humbleness. We're, we're busy trying to be popular, busy trying to be seen, have the cutest outfit, hair, nails, you know, best car, best haircut, best highlights you know we're worried about being seen by others right and and being called out and 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 being you know the top of the top I'm the best you know look at how I'm blessed you know blessings on blessings and worried about that it says for you love the best seat in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace meaning you want to be recognized when you go into marshals you want them to call out your name right and say hey this such and such we got some new stuff for you today right at at these little boutiques right that's the wrong thing to be worried about in the last days 
right? That's the leaven of the Pharisees. It says, for you love the best seat in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace. Woe to you for you are like un." mark graves like you don't there you are you are dead and you don't even know you're dead right you're dead and it's as if you are completely walking in blindness right you miss the whole point of the law right it says woe to you for you are like unmarked graves and people walk over them without knowing it people don't even know that you exist when you're in an unmarked grave right? You don't even realize death has come and it's right beneath your feet, right? And so a whole life of a person is is there beneath your feet, but now they're gone. And so with the Pharisees, you know, they don't even realize they're dead. They don't even realize they have passed. They don't even realize that, that they have lost the whole point of the law. So, um, this is okay verse 45 okay verse 45 one of the lawyers answered him teacher in saying these things you insult us also and he said to him woe to you lawyers also for you load people with burdens hard to bear and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. All right, first of all, let's start with that 45 where it says, um, one of the teachers answered him, one of the lawyers answered him, teacher, in saying these things, you insult us also. So the lawyers were the ones who were the experts in the law, right? They were the in the law of Moses. And so they were basically telling Christ that he had offended them um, in his exposition about the Pharisees, right? And um, talking to them about not loving, but tithing and, and not caring about the, the people. And what was the other thing? Um, neglecting others um, when they were doing all these little small things of the law, right? And so um, it says, one of the lawyers answered him, teacher, in saying these things, you insult us also. So first of all, don't let Christ, don't be turned off by being insulted by Christ, right? It's okay to be insulted by Christ. He chastises us so that we can be better, right? He wants us to grow in character. He wants us to to grow in in who we are and not be so caught up in being offended, right? It, it's not about being offended either. He, what is the scripture? I don't know the exact wording of it, but it's like this rock is going to either crush you or you're going to be shattered by it, right? So, um, you when you're shattered, you can be put back together, but when you're crushed you know, don't, don't be crushed by this rock of offense, right? He is a rock of offense and he comes to get this sin out of us. So it's okay to be offended by Christ, but, but don't stop there. Make sure you let it cause you to grow, right? So it says the lawyers are telling him that he's insulting them. Oh, well, oh, well, it says verse 46. And he said, woe to you also, right? Woe to you lawyers also, these people who were supposedly experts in the law. It says, and he said, woe to lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Wow. So they heap and heap upon the people, these people who have to go out, these people who have to work, these people who have to live, these people who have to go through daily life, and you're you're being taken care of by the church, right? Um, and you're being taken care of by, you know, other means, but you're put, loading on them all these burdens of these laws that you're making up um to try to satisfy something this or that when when just having the spirit of god in your heart and knowing the the meaning behind the law was what god wanted us to do right and so and now that christ has come and he's fulfilled the law they don't recognize him because they want to stay with all the rules. They want to keep this up, right? Man-made stuff. So it says, for you low the people with burdens hard to bear and you yourself do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers, meaning that you don't even lift it up. You don't, e you don't even try to help them in any way, shape or form to try to fulfill all these laws that you guys have made up. Remember, there are 10 commandments, but there are 613 laws, 
that's a lot. And so they, they made up all these laws and instead of trying to ease, you know, some of them or, or come up off of, you know, one or two, because they, the people weren't able to fulfill it and they knew it, you know, cause they were coming to the temple trying to get atonement for all these sins. And so, but instead of saying, okay, wait, let's scratch all of this that we made up and stick with thou shall not kill. <laughs> right. <laughs> instead of sticking with the law that was there that God gave them, they were instead um, creating more and more laws for the people. And that's what it means by they do not touch the burden with one of their fingers. Verse 47, woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses and you consent to the deeds of your fathers for they killed them and you built their tombs. Therefore, also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute so that the blood of the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Wow. So it is saying that, you know, they are participating in the sins of their fathers by going and creating these lavish temples and things for the prophets whom they killed, whom they, you know, persecuted and and scrutinized their words. That's what their fathers did. And so now it's almost like poking fun of it because they're going and making these lavish, you know, temples um, and not temples, um, um, uh tombs for these prophets whom their fathers killed so and it says so that the blood of the prophet shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation so not only um uh, are the the fathers guilty for doing what they did but that generation is going to be charged for that right because they're participating in it by um, creating these tombs as if almost to mock the situation. And so it says from the blood of Abel to meaning Cain kill Abel. So he was perse- per, uh, persecuted for his belief and for the things that he was doing for God. So all the way from the blood of Abel, all the way to the blood of Zachariah who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. So God is going to call to account all those things, right? And so it says, um, woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves and you hindered those who were entering. Ooh, okay. So um, there's a key here, right? So a key of knowledge. So knowledge unlocks something, right? So instead of taking the word and unlocking the mysteries of God for the people, instead of um saying, hey, you can't read, so I'm going to show you what the word is saying and hope that God will move by his spirit in you. So instead of using the word the way it was supposed to be used in the study that it was supposed to be used, they used it for their own benefits. They used it to make more rules. They used it to confine the people rather than free the people, right? So it says, yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves and you hindered those who were entering all right and so this part let's go to verse 53 as he went away from there the scribes and the pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak about many things lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say so they were mad they were grumbling they were complaining at this part. Um, and so let's go to chapter 12 um, to, to um, see what it is. 
that okay then this next part so remember this this portion verse 12 um we we went back to 11 because it starts with in the meantime and the crowds are going kind of wild so it says in the meantime when so many thousands of the people had gathered together that they were trampling one another he began to say to his disciples first Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So he's telling them, okay, that vert, that chapter 11, beware of that leaven, right? Beware of them. Um, What was it here? Let me go back. I'm sorry. Uh, it was uh, talking about um, not loving your brother, but yet calling people out and hold on, let me, I'm sorry. Let me go all the way back down. It is down to like 30. Okay. All right. And so woe to you Pharisees for you tithe the mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and love of God, neglect the justice and love of God. So he's saying, be careful of this right? Going every little law and, oh, y'all aren't married. So y'all can't go da, 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 da. And you're pointing the finger at everybody else and you're doing every little teeny piece of the law. And yet you're not loving people. Yes, you are right. What you are saying is right, but that doesn't mean you're the judge. That doesn't mean that you are supposed to be the one to go and run. Into we live by the spirit, right? We don't live by the law. We live by the spirit. So as the spirit gives us utterance, that's when we speak. As the spirit gives us things, because the spirit is going to do everything it does in love. It's not going to go against justice. It's always going to remember justice. It's not going to neglect justice, right? It's going to walk in the love of God. All right. And so um, the, what we were just talking about, let's go back. Oops, sorry. Let me move this thing out of the way. Sorry, you guys. Okay, 12. All right. And so it says, in the meantime, okay, we already read those things. Okay, that will not be revealed. Okay, this is the actual conflation verse. It says, nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark you shall be heard in the light. And what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. So nothing is covered up that will not be revealed. So this sin of the Pharisees, this sin of neglect of the weightier matters, which are love, you know, are not going to be looked over. God is going to call an account to it. He wants us to remember that in the end, it's all going to be revealed. When you have a job to do for the Lord, he wants you to do that job, right? Regardless of whether people um, approve of you or not, regardless of whether, you know, whatever, right? We're not led by the flesh. We're led by the spirit of God. We're not debted to the flesh. We're debted to the spirit. We're not debted to people. We're in debt to God. He is the one who has freed us. So therefore we live by his spirit. We live by his words, right? And nothing that is covered up will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. God is going to reveal everything in its time. The, the Pharisees, you know, everything that they did will be revealed. Everything that they ignored of God will be revealed. Everything that they, you know, think they got away with will be revealed. And we are not in debt. They were acting as if they were in debt to their brothers. And that was not of God. God wanted them to live according to the spirit and not to the flesh. If they were living uh, um, in a way that was according to the spirit, which was behind the law, they would have recognized Christ when he came. They would have recognized that, hey, this is wrong or, or this is right. And I need to align myself with that rather than people. Amen. And being so offended by the presence of Christ. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this study. Thank you for this teaching, God. 
thank you for bringing our mindset up higher and helping us to remember love in all things, Lord God. Remember justice, Lord. When we see a wrong being done, help us to remember these things, Lord God. We love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.